I had a few days free this week and there is a book project I've been meaning to work on. I do my best thinking and problem solving during long haul land travel on buses and trains, just looking out the window, nothing fancy. When I'm working on something, it's more about the journey than the destination for me. So I'm heading up to Hanover, New Hampshire. It's a good five hour bus ride from Midtown Manhattan and I'm taking the Dartmouth coach. I went to Dartmouth for undergrad and I used to go to all the alumni reunions every five years like clockwork, but I missed one six years ago because I had a work conflict and then I moved to Hong Kong and the pandemic happened. So I haven't been back to campus in years. We made it. It took five and a half hours because there was so much traffic in Connecticut. We're finally here. I'm so hungry. The campus is beautiful. I just checked in and I have to go get food because I haven't eaten all day, I've been on the bus. But let me share the room really, really quickly. I have stayed in the Hanover Inn a few times before for reunions and for holidays, but they've had a complete refurbishment and it is so nice. This is the bathroom, hello. All new vanities. Gilchrist and Soames, this is what they've always had as toiletries. Windowed bathroom, I wonder what that looks like. I might have to use the blind. Walk-in shower with refillable toiletries, really nice. Full length mirror. Closet here, massive closets because it's cold outside so people's clothes take up a lot of space robes and slippers which are so key for cold weather laundry bag and umbrella i heard it's gonna rain tomorrow i booked a king size room for two nights this is room 523 it has the sloped ceilings which i kind of like it's a little bit charming a big tv a giant bed with a dartmouth pillow Two bedside tables with lamps, a great desk, a really useful desk, not just a little table, two controllable radiators, one on either side of the room. It does get very cold in New Hampshire, and a Lavazza coffee machine. Anyways, Dartmouth is exactly what the quintessential Hollywood movie version of what a New England liberal arts college experience looks like. Red brick, white buildings with shutters, a pervasive college color theme, in this case green, football, frats, bonfires, beer, dark wood paneled libraries that serve afternoon tea, preppy students who play sports, and who in my day all drove sobs? Do you guys remember that car, sob? I have no idea what students drive these days. I'm here to think and outline and optimistically write something, and I'm also here to get out of New York for a few days and lay eyes on something new yet still familiar, maybe buy some college merch, clear my head. Before I moved to Hong Kong, I would try to get out of New York at least for a day trip once every six to eight weeks because the city will drive you mad slowly. It's like you're that frog in that pot of cold water that they're slowly turning up the heat on and you have no idea what's happening until you are frog toast. But over the last two years since I came back to New York, I have been a little bit too stagnant, I think. One of my 2024 resolutions is to get back to being myself and doing things that make me feel like myself. I always think about what Sid Field says about screenplay writing, and I think it applies to real life too. He says that action is character. Personally, I really like going back to where I came from because it reminds me of where I came from. Walking through campus now somehow still feels the same as when I walked through campus in the mid 1990s. One of the biggest barriers I have to productivity is that I often find myself spending time consuming way more content than I create. 
I think a lot about how over the years, the way I engage with the world has completely changed. I think about tactile things a lot, like what it feels like to pick up a landline telephone receiver or shutting a house door or a car door, browsing in a department store instead of putting things in my shopping cart online. Maybe it's because I'm an old, but sometimes I will catch myself after days of doing the absolute bare minimum in terms of real world engagement. And I'll worry about losing touch, literally losing touch and becoming a Wally person. So I think it's good that I'm reminding myself to get out there and see and do new or revisit familiar things. I learned a lot about loyalty and branding in my late teens and early 20s by going to Dartmouth. There are hundreds if not thousands of traditions and brand touch points that you're inculcated in from the first moment you set foot on campus. Okay, I'm heading back today to New York. I thought about staying an extra day, but it's just been raining nonstop and today's also raining. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's raining. So I'm gonna catch an afternoon bus directly from campus back to Midtown. But first I'm gonna go try to get breakfast which is not as easy as it seems because there's really only one breakfast place in town that's open this week but let's try lose people who went to dartmouth tend to feel very strongly about their time at the college and its effect in forming their mindsets and identities and it's not surprising that the college has one of the highest alumni giving rates in the country and weirdly a lot of dartmouth alums marry each other it's not a cult but there are culty elements to it in many ways, or most ways, I am a very different person now than I was 25 years ago. But the older I get, the more I tend to believe that underneath all of these layers of experiences and life lessons, the core of each person really shows up when you're young. I have this theory that if you were good friends, really good friends with someone in high school, there's almost, almost, almost nothing you can do later in life, barring outright betrayal that can make them not like you. Because because if they liked you as a teenager or young adult, when I'm pretty sure I was at my very worst, they like you as a real whole person. Having lifelong friends is, I think, maybe the closest form of unconditional love that I can think of outside of the immediate family. 